Hi everyone, this is Andrew Time. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 ARM on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac using Parallels Desktop. So this is going to be different from the previous method we've been using to install Windows 10 ARM and the Parallels Desktop virtualization system is going to offer much better compatibility for certain types of software, especially games. So Parallels Desktop for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac has just been released on the 17th of December and it's still going to be a technical preview, but it's free to try and some games will work. So why don't we try this now? All we need to do is to click on the technical preview button and then we'll get to a sign up page. So if you haven't signed up already, please sign up to Parallels and log into your account. And when you get to the actual download page, all we need to do is to click on the download button here to download the software. And I'll put that in my downloads folder. Once you've downloaded the software, go to your downloads folder and double click on the Parallels DMG that you've downloaded. And then double click on the installer to install it and press open. We need to accept the licensing agreement. Press OK here. Then we need to give permission. Press OK. Press OK. Press OK. This is just giving access for parallels to certain folders on your computer. Press OK here. So here it's saying that we are restricted from using um, standard Intel-based virtual machines. So we need to set up our own virtual machine. So what we need to do is to download a VHDX file. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description. What we need to do here is to download Windows Insider Preview of the Windows 10 ARM. So once you've signed up for the Windows Insider Preview, which is free with any Microsoft account, you, we can actually download the latest Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview. So I'm gonna click on this now. So now that the Windows 10 ARM has downloaded into your downloads folder, the Parallels installer has actually found the actual file automatically. So we're just going to create this virtual machine. And then we're going to sign into our Parallels account. We're just going to give permission for Parallels to install. So it's saying here that there's a recovery issue, so I'm just going to ask it to restart. So it seems to have detected the username of my Mac, which uh, Parallels would have done. So we've now managed to boot into Windows 10 ARM. And as you can see, we have the standard Windows 10 desktop, even though this is running in the ARM version of the software. And um, it has the normal kind of Parallels uh, integration. For example, I can change the, the resolution setting here and it will just resize when I pull the window into any any kind of aspect ratio. Um, if I full screen it now, it'll go into 1920 by 1080 p which is my monitor resolution at the moment. It also has the standard Parallels Mac integration, so I can double click on here to get into my files, and I've got my screenshots folder, which is the same one that's on my actual Mac desktop itself. And um, I have this tidy folder as well, which is also on my Mac desktop. This particular version also has the network drivers installed, so we don't have to worry about that. So here I'm just going to run Geekbench 5 tryout and see how the system performs under Parallels. So we're running under two cores, two processors under the ARM64 architecture. So this is now showing a single core score of 1502 and a multi-core score of 2808, which is very impressive, uh, especially as we're only running two cores. I'm going to try tweaking this to go to four cores instead, and then we're going to increase the RAM to you know half the RAM that the computer can use. So this is the uh, Parallels settings menu. Let's close that now, and let's start the virtual machine again and give that Geekbench another go. So this is now producing a single core score of 1,326 and a multi-core score of 3,424, which is very, very impressive. It does actually feel very snappy and 
and it performs really well. It feels almost native level with the animations and the way that the applications feel. Um, I'm just going to do some testing on some games now. Um, what's interesting about this method of running games is that it's going to offer much better compatibility. So you can actually install GOG Galaxies on Parallels, and this is not possible using Crossover. And I'm going to be experimenting with the other launches like Uplay, etc., and see if other games will be able to run. But um, let's look at my library at the moment. I'm going to show you a game like Half-Life. So I'm going to launch Half-Life 2 and show you how this performs. Um, this game doesn't actually work on Crossover. Um, it does actually play, but there's loads of texture issues that you'll experience. It's going to load the first intro train sequence. So um, on the crossover version of this game, the, uh, the actual textures flicker, but uh, that isn't actually happening here. Of the line. Seems to be working pretty much perfectly. Welcome, Welcome to City 17. My FPS counter isn't actually working. The Steam overlay isn't actually working in this game either. But um, it seems to be running at 60 frames per second. That's what it feels like. This is a very different experience than on Crossover because there's no flickering textures and it seems to be rendering perfectly. Let me just play through this section and show you a bit more. What I've noticed is that the mouse sensitivity is a little bit low. I don't really know why that is, but um, I can probably tweak that in parallels later. You feel some frame drops, but it's generally speaking, it's pretty good. This must be a mistake. I got a standard relocation coupon just like everybody else. Anyway, this is um, working. It's very, very impressive. Let me show you a different game now. So this is just one example of a, of a game that doesn't really work on Crossover. But um, there's another game which I'm going to show you now, which is Fallout. So the older Fallout games don't really work well on Crossover either. They don't actually load at all. But if I show you this particular version of Fallout 2, this does actually work quite well. I'm just going to load the... Um, High resolution launcher of Fallout 2. You can kind of see it's all loading correctly. Again, we've got like really low um, mouse sensitivity, but um, what's amazing is that this game loads. This game from 1998 with um, a whole load of fixes and patches does load seem what seems like a flawless entry into the game. I'm not sure why the widescreen hasn't loaded, but um, I did get it to work earlier. It's just a, a, uh, an issue with Fallout itself, because Fallout's kind of notorious for having lots of fixes that it needs to be applied before you can get widescreen to work correctly. But as you can see, all of these music, sound effects, etc. seems to work fine. So this is the beginning, beginning area. It's not particularly exciting. But as you can see, it's all working. It's, it's really quite exciting because um, the, there are so many games that are not available on the Apple Silicon Max, and now that we can see that Parallels does work, and we can see that the way that Windows 10 ARM does the translation from the x86 instructions to the ARM instructions, it actually works pretty well for these low-end games. I'm going to be doing some higher-end game testing very soon. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next tech video.